Hello fellow adventurers and welcome back to another episode of Word Safari. In this episode we're going to be looking at a whole bunch of cognates from another Indo-European root that has found its way through our vocabulary in a number of perhaps surprising ways. So let's get started and talk about what root we are going to be talking about in this episode. We're going to be looking at the Indo-European root gen. Now, as I said, this root is all over the place in the English language from a number of different sources, from Greek, from Latin, and from our native Germanic inheritance in English. What does this root mean, or what did it originally mean? It had something to do with creating something, giving birth to something. On the other hand, uh, sort of the opposite of that is being born. Somebody gives birth and then somebody else is born, or comes into being, or begins life. So this root gives birth, no pun intended, to words that mean all of these different things. It also gives birth to nouns that mean something like a group that is born together. If you are born together with other individuals, metaphorically or literally, you probably share some traits with those individuals, right? So this root can mean birth, it can mean creating new life, it can mean a group a clan or some some any any kind of group of something or people that share characteristics so let's get started looking at some of the words that we get from this root in english let's start at the start the metaphorical start as it were what about the word genesis the word genesis actually comes from this uh, root in indo-european now if you know about the hebrew bible it was not written in an indo-european language um, and so this word does not appear in the original manuscripts of the bible in hebrew um, it's actually a greek word and this greek word genesis just meant beginning birth or creation so you can see why it would be an appropriate word to call the book of genesis in the Hebrew Bible. Uh, if it wasn't in the original text, where did this name come from? Well, it actually came from the Greek translators, the Jewish people who translated the Bible from Hebrew into Greek, uh, gave it a Greek name because they were translating it, translating it into Greek. Also, in uh, many Semitic cultures, including ancient Israel, normally you would call a book by its first word or a couple of words, um, whereas in Greek culture and many other European cultures, it would be uh, traditional to give a book a title that wasn't just its first few words, but was sort of a description of what was in it. Um, and so when the Greek translators, when the Jewish translators translated it from Hebrew into Greek, they followed Greek conventions in giving it a, a more Greek sounding title instead of just the first few words. We don't call it in the beginning, we call it Genesis, although those are actually kind of similar terms now that you know what Genesis means. Okay, so Genesis, great place to start. That comes from the root gen, and you can see gen right there at the beginning of Genesis. What else? We get verbs like generate from the root gen. Generate comes from the Latin verb genero. The past participle was generatum, uh, and this means to, to generate or to bring forth. So you can see the root gen in action there. Um, what else? What else do we get from this? Generation. Uh, of course, generation is a noun that's closely related to the verb generate. We can talk about the generation of power, which is when you generate power. But we also have a special meaning of this noun, generation, that doesn't specifically just mean the generation of something, like the creation of something, but it can also be a group of people who are born or brought forth together. So we talk about people uh, existing in generations like Generation X or Generation Z, boomers, millennials, whatever. So we talk about groups of people born together, and this goes back to this root again, which makes sense. What about a word like progeny? Progeny comes from a, a Latin word progenies. The pro means forward or forth, and the gen, it comes from the gen root. So what does this mean? It means that which is created forward. Forward in time is sort of the idea here of progeny. It is your offspring, it is your descendants. That's essentially what it is. Another word that comes from the root gen that has to do with giving birth is Pregnant. Now, the gen is disguised a little bit in pregnant. You can see the G-N there in the middle, but the E has gone missing. Um, that goes all the way back to Latin because it comes from Latin pregnans. Pri means uh, before. It, sometimes we see it in the form pre, P-R-E, which it might be more familiar to you in that sense. So pregnans means before birth, and the birth is the gn part there in the middle where the e has fallen out, but I promise you it's still the same gen root. And so that's actually really all pregnant means. You are in a state that hopefully will lead up to giving birth, and uh, that's where the word comes from. 
What about a word like genetic? Obviously, genetic has gen here at the very beginning, and so it comes from this gen root. It comes from the Greek adjective genetikos, which uh, just means pertaining to the origin of something. In our modern sense of the term, this was only coined in the past couple hundred years as we started to understand modern science better. So the modern sense of the term doesn't go all the way back to ancient Greek. Similarly, our word gene obviously just comes from the gen root as well. Uh, this was coined uh, only really toward the start of the 20th century as we started to really understand how these kind of things work at the microscopic level. Um, scientists coined this term from the old gen root, from Greek or Latin, to, to mean, to, to, to basically describe this fundamental unit of how we carry birth information forward. It's a gene, and that was a great uh, term for them to coin for this particular uh, concept. What about something like genuine? You may never have thought of the connection between genetic and genuine before, but they do both go back to this Indo-European root. Why is that? What does genuine mean? It comes from Latin genuinum, which just means natural or native or not foreign. That is the original meaning of genuine. There isn't some admixture from something that we, our community, would consider to be not genuine, not pertaining to us. Uh, of course, today, it really just means real from the beginning, aka not artificial. It hasn't been tampered with. It goes all the way back to the beginning. It is fundamentally true. That is something genuine as we would think about it. What about a word like genius? Genius also goes back to gen, and it goes back to a Latin word that is spelled the same way, but pronounced genius. Uh, and in Latin, genius was something that is with you from birth. It could be your talents, it could be your character as a person, um, but the most common way this word was used in Latin was a lot of Romans believed that there was what we would probably today call a guardian angel or something with you from birth. It's a spirit that kind of watches over you. That would be your gain use, but it could mean anything that was with you from birth, spirit, talent, character, whatever. Today, we really just use it to mean somebody who is really smart, somebody who has been born with great intelligence. And so you can see the gen root in action there because we're saying this goes back to your native capabilities. If you're a genius, it's not because you necessarily had a great education, right? You were just born that way if you were a genius. Uh, what about engine? You may never have thought about this connection. And again, the gen root is kind of hiding in the word engine. So you may not have made this connection, but let's trace it back and see how it comes from the gen root. So first of all, as you can probably tell from things looking a little weird, this actually comes through French from Latin. It doesn't come directly from Latin. So English got it from old French, engine, which originally just meant skill, or cleverness. Um, it didn't necessarily mean an engine as we think of it today, and I'll explain in a minute how that how that uh, semantic drift came to occur. So engine is this word that comes from Old French, engine, and that comes from Latin ingenium. You can see the connection there once you look at it. And in Latin, the word ingenium meant inborn talent. The in means in, the gen means born. So ingenium is something that is born inside of you. In that sense, it's a lot like genius. Uh, in the sense that it's something you're born with, but it actually has the in there on the front. So the original meaning of ingenium, and by the way, in case you're wondering, our word ingenious, like an ingenious plan, comes from this. So ingenious and genius are totally connected in that sense, um, but they're also connected to this word engine. So originally, this word ingenium was just inborn talent. In French, it came to mean talent in the sense of skill or cleverness. And then later on, it came to refer to something that could be invented or created by means of somebody's inborn talent. So an engine originally just meant a, a machine or a device that it, that it took somebody really smart to figure out how to make this thing. It isn't just something that anybody could have invented. It is a device of ingeniousness, and that's where we get our word engine to refer to something that, you know, we would today call a device that is uh, really difficult to invent that, you know, I probably couldn't have invented if I had tried, but somebody smart did, and that's why we call it that. What about cognate? This is one of our favorite words here at Word Safari. We use it all the time. Cognate means two words that are connected to each other, but why does cognate mean that? Where does it, where does it come from? Well, as it turns out, cognate is cognate with all of the other words that we are talking about here in this particular safari because it comes from Latin cogna tum. The co is cone, and that means with 
or together. The Gana is actually from the Gen root. Now you can see two things have happened to it here. Number one, the E has dropped out in the middle of the G and the N. We've already seen that with words like pregnant, where the E is not there anymore. And there's an A at the end of the root here. There's, there's some linguistic purpose behind this. Uh, this goes back to something in the New European that we don't necessarily need to talk about. Uh, but if you know Indo European, you know what it is. So uh, the root looks like Gna here, uh, and it has this ko on the front. So ko gnatum literally just means born together. And in Latin, it could mean any any biological being or something else that is born together or shares a common history. But today in English, we usually use it to refer to words. When you say something is cognate, um, you don't normally mean uh, the two elephants that you see on your screen, for instance. You mean words, words that are connected, that share a common origin, that were born together in some way. And that's how you know something is cognate. Let's keep going and get a little bit further afield in the sense of what the word looks like. What about a word like native? Now, you might be wondering, wait a minute, native doesn't look like the Gen root. I mean, it has an N, but other than that, it doesn't really look like the Gen root. This actually, uh, the, the reason that I put cognate before native is because this also comes from the form of the root in Latin that was gna. Now, in cognatum, the G survives there. But when it was at the beginning of the word, the G would fall off because it was hard to say gnati and they usually just drop the G off and said na t womb. But this na totally comes from the genru. The G and the E have just been lost. Again, this might not, not might not be something that you would realize until you looked into it. So this comes from a Latin word na t womb, which means produced by birth. So today, when we use the word native, we mean belonging by birth. So if you're native to somewhere, that's where you and perhaps your family, your ancestors were born. If there's talent that is native to you, it's in you from birth, right? So you can see how the birth idea uh, is inherent there in the word native. Another word that starts with just na that also comes from the gen root here is nature. This comes from Latin natura, which means birth or character in the sense of somebody has a particular nature. It's something that is born inside of them. And then later on, we in English came to apply this to anything that is outside our window. It's just born that way. Trees are born that way. Animals are born that way. They have that nature. And so we call it nature. But it comes from this idea of something being born in a certain way. Other words uh, where the gen root just shows up as na instead of gen or gana or something like that. Innate. Innate has this prefix in on it, which just means in in Latin. So innatum means inborn, born in, in na. And that's how you can kind of piece those things together. If something is innate, of course, it's, 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 it's native, it's natural, it's present from birth, right? So you can see how those, uh, those morphemes in Latin, those meaning-bearing units of words come together. What about nation? You might not have thought of nation because the word nation today has, again, taken a little bit of a semantic journey away from the idea of birth. But originally, the original Latin word natio that we get nation from uh, just meant a group of people who are born together. Now, they didn't quite have our modern ideas of race yet, so it didn't quite mean race, but it really was just a group of people born together. Maybe we would say ethnicity, although that's not quite an exact match either. Um, it comes from this birth root. And the idea is there wasn't a lot of immigration, uh, at least not in the modern sense, in the ancient world, certainly not way back in time before you get to the cosmopolitan age of the Roman Empire. And so usually people were born in a group, they stayed there, and they died there. And that would have been a nation. It's a group of people who share a common origin, common customs, common birthplace, common land. And, and, and that's essentially what a nation is. Of course, again, We've moved past the etymological meaning of this term today because we can talk about nations like the United States, for instance, where we know that there's a diverse population born in all sorts of different places who have come here or their ancestors have come here from different places, different continents, different cultures. Um, but we still call ourselves a nation, even though etymologically speaking, we are a nation of immigrants, which the Romans would have been a little bit confused about given the etymology of this term. All right, let's talk about more gen words. What about the word genus? Going to science, if you took uh, high school or middle school biology like I did, you had to memorize this chart of kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Genus just comes from the Latin genus. This was a regular word in Latin that meant, and again, uh, race is not necessarily the best translation because they didn't have our modern ideas of race back then, but it's a group of people who are born together, who maybe look similar, who share similar, uh, you know, languages and ideas and concepts and, and land and everything else. So we might call it a stock 
a people, a kind. Um, it could be a number of different things, but it totally comes from this gen root, as you can see. Now, more recently, in the past couple hundred years, we have reached back into Latin and pulled this word out to use it in our chart here as a classification of a kind of living thing uh, that, that, is, that is a little bit above species, um, but it's still a, a fairly small group of people or, uh, or animals or plants or whatever that share a common origin. So you can see how genus or genus, as we pronounce it today is working there. Genocide, of course, also comes from the gen root because genocide comes from this gen plus the second part comes from Latin kid, the root kid, kaido, which means to cut down or to kill. Latin had a lot of words for to kill and this was one of them. Um, so the idea is it's the killing of a whole genus, genus of people, a race, a stock, a kind, an ethnicity, whatever you want to call it. Um, now, this is something where we're not actually 100% sure whether this is supposed to be coming from the Greek genos or the Latin genus because they had very similar words, just one letter different, that vowel, the second uh, vowel from the end of the word there. Um, and this word was only coined in 1944, and I'm not sure that, uh, that the person who coined it was necessarily trying to get it specifically from Greek or Latin. Either way, it comes from the gen root, whether you want to trace it from Greek or Latin, I think is okay, um, and you can't necessarily tell, although the O on it might make you think Greek because the Greek had an O there and the Latin had a U there, but that could just be a connecting vowel, so I wouldn't necessarily be dogmatic about it. What about a word like general? General today just means sort of pertaining to anything. So you might be wondering, how does that come from some of the meanings of the gen root that we've been looking at that are, that are specific, like related to a particular family or group or nation or whatever? Well, it comes from the Latin word generalis, which has the gen root there at the beginning, which originally meant of a whole kind. You have a kind of something and it pertains to anything within that kind. And if you think about it, that's sort of what the word general means. And you can see how we came from this word meaning a particular kind to sort of being anything because originally it was everything within a particular kind or everything within a particular group. We see this uh, in uses of the word like uh, general store where anything you might want to buy, anything that's within the group of things you want to buy are going to be there at the general store or a general as a rank in, in an army. Um, it's somebody who is in charge of everybody who is within the army. So generally speaking, within the kind of person that would be in the army, that person is in charge of all of them. We also have a word like generic that has a similar history it's from Latin genericum, although this Latin word did not actually mean generic. Um, it, it, we, we've sort of abstracted this idea from it later. Generic is pretty similar to general, if you think about it, and the semantic evolution is, is pretty similar. But if something is generic, it's, per, it's not pertaining to everything within the particular group. It's pertaining to anything within the particular group. So I changed one letter there in the definition to go from general to generic. But the idea is still there that you have a group that is is united by something and then something that is generic could be related to anything in that particular group like a generic drug is 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 like any of the brands within that particular kind of drug but you see it's a kind of something and it relates to anything in there what about genre? Genre actually comes from the root gen as well. As you can probably guess from the way we pronounce it, genre, it comes from French genre, which just means a kind of something or a type of something. Um, this comes from Latin. Uh, notice that E is gone between the N and the R, but that's something French does a lot. So it comes from these gener words in Latin that we have been looking at. Um, interestingly, gender also comes from the same word as genre. So genre means a kind of something. Gender also means a kind of something. Uh, you might be wondering where the D comes from. We actually got gender from the old French version of the modern French word genre. And in old French, sometimes the D would show up, which is not there etymologically. This is another one of those consonants that we have been seeing that sometimes creep up between two sounds to make it easier to say them together. So if you try to actually say an N and an R next to each other, a lot of times a D will show up. When whether you like it or not. And that's where the D is coming from in gender. So gender and genre are actually etymologically the same word. One of them has this D and the other one doesn't. So why, why do we use the word gender in the way we use it today if it comes from such a you know generic term? Well, 
fundamentally it means just a kind of something. Now, originally this word was used in English not for living beings, but for nouns. It was a grammatical term. Uh, if you if you if you have learned a European language like French, Spanish, German, really most languages that aren't English, uh, at least from Europe, uh, you know that they have grammatical gender, masculine, feminine, maybe even neuter. Um, this is where the word gender comes from in the English language. For many hundreds of years, we would just use this to refer to masculine nouns and feminine nouns or neuter nouns. And this wouldn't be something you would use for living beings at all until actually pretty recently, um, within the past hundred years, we started using the word gender and expanded its meaning from nouns to people. And now we talk about masculine gendered people and feminine gendered people and other genders as well. But really, this is not a fancy word. Etymologically, it just means a kind of person, a kind of noun, a kind of animal if you gender your pets or whatever, right? So you can see that, that again, uh, th this is connected to the gen root fairly easily once you see that. What about a word like engender? Maybe you have wondered to yourself when you had nothing better to think about, what, what's the connection between gender and engender? Because th they don't really mean the same thing. Uh, but once you understand they both come from the gen root and see the, uh, the semantic journey that both of them have taken, it, it makes a lot more sense. So the engender comes from Old French engendre, which again has that D sneaking up in there, which the N and the R that is not actually there etymologically. This in Old French meant to, to beget or to procreate, to create new life, and it just comes from the Latin in genero, which means to create in, to create something new in someone else. Now, today when we talk about engendering, we usually, we usually use it more metaphorically, like you're trying to engender warm feelings or love or something in somebody else. So you can see how this, how this uh, word comes to get its meaning. It's it's just in, create, create in. If you're trying to create something in someone else, feelings, whatever, you're going to engender. And that's the connection between gender and engender because they both end with the same two syllables. Um, they both go back to this root gen, even though they really come from two different branches of the tree from a semantic perspective. Now, we're going to end this safari by looking at some words that you may never have guessed come from the Gen root uh, if you didn't know a little something called Grimm's Law, which we have been talking about in some previous safari. So I'll put the link up here if you want to, uh, to go get a refresher course or maybe just learn for the first time about what Grimm's Law is. But essentially, Grimm's Law is a series of sound laws. And if you don't know what that is, I talk about that in that link as well. Um, it's a series of sound laws that happened between Proto-Indo-European and Proto-Germanic. So anytime we are looking at an Indo-European root and we want to see how that root plays out in the Germanic languages, including English, we need to uh, we need to take some of the consonants through a series of mutations. One of those consonants that gets affected is the consonant g or g. Gs become cuz. That's one of the things that happens in Grimm's Law. So if we're looking for cognates of the root gen in the Germanic languages, they are not going to start with G, they're going to start with K. And here's one right now. Our word kin actually just comes from the root gen. The N is still the same, the vowel has changed a little bit, but the big difference is the G has become a K. But if you think about it, the, the meaning has really not changed much at all. Even though the G has become a K, once you see that, you can't unsee it because the because the, the semantics really have not gone very far afield at all. We get our word kin from the old English word kin, very similar, which means family, race, kind, nature, really any of those things that we have been looking at so far in this safari, it can mean any of those. It just means people of a common birth. Uh, what about king? We've actually already talked about king uh, in a previous safari a long time ago at this point. Um, it comes from the old English kuning, and there are two possible etymologies for this, both of which have something to do with, with uh, birth or belonging. It could mean somebody belonging to us leading those of common birth, or it could mean one descended from noble birth. But regardless of which etymology of king you prefer, it definitely goes back to the gen root because it has something to do with birth and belonging and commonality and those kind of things. What about kind? We've actually been using the word kind quite a bit throughout this safari, uh, and you may not have realized up until this point that kind also comes from the gen root. So it's not an accident that we've been translating a lot of these gen words with the word kind of something. Uh, this also goes back to Old English kind, which means kind, nature, race. It wasn't actually that different from the word kind, uh, kin rather, it just had a D suffix on the end. It also just meant a group with a common origin. Now today, kin and kind have sort of 
gone their own ways, where kin is specifically family members and relatives, and kind is a more general word that honestly we use a lot more often uh, often than kin in modern English, uh, because we use kinds for anything, a kind of this, a kind of that. Now you might be wondering, what about the adjective kind? Where does that come in? Does that come from this too? As it turns out, it does. The adjective kind, which means nice or thoughtful or something like that, also comes from this because the original meaning of acting kind was to act the way that people typically act toward people who, with whom they share a common origin. Historically speaking, I probably don't need to tell you this, historically speaking, people have not been that nice to people who are not like them, who are from another tribe or from another place in the world, speak another language or whatever. This is something we're trying to do in the modern world is train people out of these, these, uh, these ideas, right? So kind goes back to a world that really is not that old, um, that, that did not exist that long ago, where it was kind of just expected that you would be nice to people who were within your group and maybe not so nice to people who are not within your group. So, so kind actually sort of harkens back to that state of looking at things where if you're going to be kind to anybody, think of how you would treat your own mother or your own kids or, or your own family members or people from within your own community. And that's what kind really is. Kindred, of course, also comes from this. It's just an expansion of the words kin or kind. Um, it comes from Middle English kinrede. That D has once again crept up in there between the N and the R. It's not there originally, just like we saw with the word like gender. So the rede part means like condition or rule or something like that. So kinrede meant condition of being related. And today we just use it in, in a similar way as kin, your kindred. But it can also be an adjective uh, if you have... Uh, it, two things are kindred, they have a common origin, right? So you, you can see how that would belong to this family of words. Finally, we are going to end with one word uh, that also comes from the root gen that we use all the time in English today as a borrowing, and that is kindergarten. Now, you may know uh, that kindergarten comes from German. It's a German phrase, kinder. Garten and Kinder just comes from this this uh, this gen root. It German is of course another Germanic language, so Grimm's law also applies to them, just like it applies to English. And so Kinder means children, because again the gen root has something to do with giving birth and having common origins with something else. So this is a perfect word to use for children, and you can see why in German this is a regular word for children. Garten, of course, just means garden, so it's cognate with our word garden in English. So you put those together, you get literally a garden for those born, going back to the idea of the gen root being those who are born. Uh, the, the, the more metaphorical meaning is it's a place where young children can grow, and that's why kindergarten was named kindergarten by, as it turns out, a German person uh, in the middle of the 19th century, and then that word was borrowed into English soon thereafter. And of course, today, all across the English-speaking world, uh, our schools have kindergartens, and we send our five-year-old kids to kindergarten, but it goes all the way back to the gen root. All right, we're going to end with that. Can you think of any other words that come from the Genru? I'll give you a hint. I left out quite a bit. I could have made this probably two safaris if I wanted to. I decided that this was enough to sort of introduce you to the Genru. But uh, if you have any other ideas of things that come from the Genru, because I really did leave out a lot, uh, comment below. I'm interested to hear what you think I should have put in here. See you next time.